Yes, 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 yes. As God give me grace, I'm going to run this race till I see my Savior face to face. And I'm going up yonder. Going up yonder to be with the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise your name this morning. We honor you. We glorify you. We've come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God, bless this service this morning. Have your way here, Lord, as we come to lift you up and to magnify your holy and righteous name. Oh, God, we thank you for another Sunday morning. Thank you for another rising up. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Oh, God, we thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength, oh, God. We thank you for another opportunity to come into your house and praise thy holy and righteous name. Have your way with us, Lord. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Touch us today, oh, God. Anoint us afresh, oh, God. Bless this service and have it to be what you want it to be as we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. It's in the wonderful matches and glorious name of Jesus do we pray. And the people of God said amen. 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 amen and amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Another Sunday morning. We're going to ask that you rise as we read the word of God this morning. Our responsive reading shall come. Brother Chairman, Deacon Ronaldo Rell will lead us in the reading of God's word. The work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. John 16, verse 5 to 15. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But for thou hast said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of the righteousness of his judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. It is because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. But you cannot hear them now. My, my. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall, he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and show unto you. All together. All, all things that, that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. And I'm mourning him this morning. This morning. Hymn number 146. The blood. It will never lose its power. Hymn number 146.
gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. the deacon. And following the prayer, we will have a selection from the choir. And following the selection, we will have our announcements from our church clerk. Let the worship presenter, if there be any, let's bow our head for prayer. Most high and heavenly Father, thou who sits up high and looks down low, thou who art everlasting to everlasting, thou who art our eternal God, Father, we thank you this day, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, because you are God all by yourself, Father. 
Father, no matter what fears we may have, Father, Father, no matter what apprehensions we may have, Father, Father, no matter what struggles we may have, Father, Father, no matter what we will see, Father, or may see, Father, you are still God by yourself, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, because when we are feeling low, you lift us up, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, because when we are on high, Father, you stabilize us, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, because when we don't know a way, Father, you provide a way, Father. Father, you, you are, Father, our all in all, and we thank you for that, Father. Father, we know that we go through our different struggles and trials and tribulations, Father. But, Father, we understand that such is life, Father. Father, you never said that we would have it smooth all the way, Father. Father, you never said that every day would be a good day, Father. But, Father, you said that you would be with us always, even until the end of the world, Father. And for that strength, Father, for that assurance alone, Father, we thank you, Father. Father, we ask that you would bless this service, Father. Father, bless this communion service, Father, that the members may be touched in a strong, mighty, and new way, Father. Father, keep us on one accord, Father, in our trials and tribulations, Father. Father, let us keep our eyes focused on you and you only, Father. Father, let us decrease, Father, so that you might increase, Father. Father, keep our minds straight, Father, so that we would follow what you would have us to do, Father, not our own will, Father. And Father, then when we don't know a way, Father, give us the guidance to figure it out, Father. Give us the mindset, Father, to be on one accord and work together, Father. Father, give us the mindset to find the answers we need, Father, grounded in you, Father. Give us your wisdom, Father. Father, we ask that you would bless the congregation, Father. Bless, Father, from the pulpit to the door and then out to the streets and to the world, Father. Father, heal our, we ask that you heal our world, Father. We know that the hearts of man has waxed cold, Father. We see it more and more every day, Father. But Father, we ask that your spirit will continue to be with us and work through us, Father. Father, we ask that you will bless those who are on the bed of affliction. Touch them in a strong and mighty way that they may be lifted up, Father. Father, bless those who are in bereavement and still mourning, Father. Father, let them know, Father, that to be absent from the body is to be present to the Lord, Father. We are only passing through this way, Father, to our home, which lives in heaven, Father. Father, continue to be with us, love us, and journey with us, Father, and never forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My hallelujah belongs to you. My 
my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Just for you, Lord. That's called.
my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. morning. First, give an honor to God, Pastor Payne, Reverend Sutler, Reverend Melendez. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The announcements for the week of April 13th. Deacon and Deaconess Annual Day, Sunday, April 28th, 11 a.m. worship service. Deacons and Deaconess serving God, serving the church in love. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith, Galatians 6.10. Mm -hmm. Reverend General Simmons, Associate Minister of Greater Exodus Baptist Church, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. is the guest preacher, and light refreshments will be served following the morning worship service in the fellowship hall. May events. Women's Ministry Flea Market will be held May 4th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Rental spaces will be $20. Bring your own everything, tables and chairs. And you may contact Sister Juliet Nichols or Sister Cassandra Lewis. A fun day trip to Washington, D.C. that will be held on Saturday, August 3rd, $125 per person. The package includes a meal at the Golden Corral Restaurant, Smithsonian Institute, National Air and Space Museum, Frederick Douglass National Historic Site, and visit to the White House, taxes and meals, and gratuities. Please pray for our sick and shut-in members and also wish the April birthdays a happy birthday. Also, there will be a women's ministry meeting. That is an error in the bulletin. The meeting will be held next Sunday, April 21st. Don't forget Bible study Wednesday night and Sanctuary Choir Rehearsal is 6 p.m. on Thursday night. Do we have any visitors this morning? It's good to see you, Sister Shannon. Amen. And may each of you have a blessed week. Amen. Thank you, Sister Shirley, for the announcements. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to prepare ourselves to bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Amen. Amen.
It's giving time. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. As our trustees come to pay, prepare the table and the deacons, we ask you to prepare your heart that we give unto the Lord that which he has given unto us. Let us look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, we praise your holy and righteous name. And God, we thank you for an opportunity, oh God, to bring our tithes and our offerings as we bless this house of God. Father, we ask that you bless now in every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask that you stand. And as you're led by the ushers, let us come. And as you're led by the Spirit, let us also give. things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given unto thee. This morning, amen. Thank God for the worship. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn your attention to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. And I like to pick it up at the 17th verse. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Now, all things 
are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry. Somebody say ministry. ministry. Of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself, not in putting their trespasses, trespasses to them. He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. It's through God we were pleading through us. We employ you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. In verse number 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have your way, choir.
the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the spirit in this place. We thank you for the choir. We thank you for the members. But God, we thank you for your presence. We ask now to hide me behind the cross that you may be glorified. Allow your word to go forth, O oh God. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Right now, right now, amen. is blessing. Y'all got it right too, choir. Y'all got it right. The Lord is blessing right now. Right now. Because the Lord is in the blessing business. I don't know how many people remember what last week's word was about. But let me remind you. Walking. Walk by the word of God. Walk by the word. We, we ought to be walking in the word of the Lord. Amen. And all the children of the Lord in this house. We ought to be walking in the word. Why you say that, Pastor Payne? Because I want to remind the church this morning. The making of a new creature. You know, we're some new creatures in here. You hear these folks singing? There's some new creatures. You hear some folks in here praying? There's some new creatures. You, you hear me now? There's some new folk in here. I, I don't know where y'all came from, but y'all got it going on. Because the Lord is blessing right now. You hear me? Mr. Musician, he blessing right now. Right now. He woke us up, what, this morning and started us on our way. I said, the Lord is blessing me right now. And if you believe that you're blessed, say amen, somebody. Because the Lord is in the blessing business. You better remember that God is in the blessing business. That's what he does bless. Listen, even when the situation don't look good, God's working it out. That's why we are to not be discouraged. Because the Lord is blessing me right now. And here's the thing about the Lord blessing us. You don't even have to see it right now. Because he don't want you to see it. But it's coming. <laughs> it's going to be on its way in a little bit. Because the Lord is blessing us. He woke us up this morning. Y'all got it right. And clothed in my right mind. Where you going, Reverend? Going to church. My neighbors say, you're going to church? I said, yeah, and I'm taking my granddaughter with me. He said, she look nice. I said, yeah, the church look nice too. <laughs> yeah. The Lord is blessing. Oh, my, my, my. Y'all absolutely right. And, and, and because it is blessing, Reverend, it's the making of a new creature. We are new creatures in Christ. Old things have passed away. And all things have become what? New. Need some new. What does it mean for a man to become a new creature? What does it mean, preacher man, for a man or a woman to become a new creature? Question mark. Very simply, it means just what it says. What the scripture says, the man and the woman actually becomes a new creature. In his or her whole being, nature, life, and behavior changes. Whereas the man was dead to God. And as a new creature, he's become alive to God. You ever been dead to the Lord? My, my, my. That's a bad state to be in. Don't know what to do, where to go, and who to talk to. That's when you don't know where to go. But a new creature has become alive to God. Whereas man had no relationship at one time with God. 
And as a new creature, we have become alive to God. Whereas man was also not sure about God. I don't know if you've ever been there. I know a whole lot of people out here talking about they ain't sure. And my, I don't like religion. And what folk fail to realize, and you got to give it to them in a nice way, it ain't about your religion, it's about your relationship. Come on, somebody. Because a whole lot of us get caught up on religion. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't go to church. No, but you need the Lord bad. Even if you don't come, you need to get to know the Lord. Because we get caught up in religion and not a relationship with the Lord. And this is about a personal relationship with the Lord. Amen, somebody. The making of a new creature is about a new relationship in the Lord. But as a new creature, he has given us a relationship with God. And, and, and whereas as, as man never fellowship rightly and commune with God, but as a new creature, new creature, we fellowship and we commune with the Lord. We're going to commune today with the Lord. Y'all know that, don't you? To remember what God has done for us. As we commune with God. And, and, and the beautiful thing about being in the blessing of the Lord. He's with us all the time. It was one time we were just living in sin and immorality. But as a new creature... We live in the Lord and in the righteousness of his holiness. Thank God for a new life, a new walk, a new talk. And listen, thank God that we're not where we were, but where we are now. Whereas man had to face death, but as a new creature, he never had to die alive, alone now. Because we are in Christ. We are new creatures in Christ. And at one time, man was doomed. And some people think you're still doomed. When I listen to the world, all they talk about is doom and destruction and war and killing. And, and I'm glad, I don't know about y'all, I'm glad I'm in the Lord. I'm glad I'm in the Lord. Do you hear me? There's a whole lot of things going on in the world. I'm glad to be in God. I'm glad to be in the church. I'm glad to know who's really in charge. That's the Lord. With all the things that are going on, it is good to be in God. It is good to be in the Lord. I don't no longer, we don't have to no longer feel doomed to judgment and eternal separation from God. But as a new creature, he has destined us to live eternally with him. In the presence of God forever and forever. Thank God for our personal relationship. I was talking to someone Friday. And we were in a heated conversation. Because they was more concerned with the world. And I had to tell them I still believe that Jesus is in charge. And I believe he's going to work it out. Well, they want to tell me all about these politicians and this group and that group and all that. Listen, ain't nothing going to happen unless the Lord make it happen. Because I, I done found out I didn't live long enough to know the man can't fix it. Only God can fix it. Come on, somebody. God is the answer. And thank God we are a new creature in the Lord. And how does a person become a new creature, you might ask? The word of the scripture says, if any man be in Christ... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. It is being in Christ, watch this somebody, it is by being in Christ that makes us a new creature. Now let me sit here next to you. You know, if you just in yourself, you ain't in Christ. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. You need help. And guess who else need help? I need help. Amen. Everybody in the building need help. And they may not know they need help. That's why we need to be in Christ. We need to be a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And matter of fact, that's what I've learned. We ought to do some new things. 
in the Lord. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. It is being in Christ that makes a person a new creature. Thank God for the newness. And when one of us, and when a person that truly believes in Jesus Christ, believes in Christ, God places him in a position in Christ. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm in position. I believe everybody in this building in position. You just, to know, you just need to know that you're in position. And you're in, a good, you're in a good position. This is the best position to be in. In Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some folk think it's good to be in something else. I'm glad it's about being in the Lord. I'm glad to know who's got everything in the palm of his hands. And God will work it out. Because we are new creatures in Christ. Listen, he's going to put an end to all the nonsense. And God, Sister Payne, places us in positions in him. And all that is in Christ. Jesus the Christ. Because Jesus lived and died and rose from the dead so we can be in him. He lived. He died. He rose from the grave so we can be in him. So that means that the person who believes in Jesus Christ identifies with Christ. And the Apostle Paul, having been a man, a madman, but since he went to such extremes, he began to go to extremes to win men to Christ. And the controlling power of his life should be the one in our life. And that is the love of Christ. And I believe it. And it sounds cliche sometimes, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Yeah. And if you believe, you're in good hands. And, this, and, and Apostle Paul describes the Lord Jesus Christ as love. In this text, he said, listen, it's about love. It's about love. And if, that verse number 17, that if any man is in Christ, 2 Corinthians, I hope you mark that in your Bible, that if any man or any woman, they really mean any, any believer that is in Christ is a new creation. Old things, listen, old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Now all things of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. That's why this church and every other church belong to the Lord. Because he does the reconciling. Listen, he died for the church. He got up out of the grave for the church. The church belongs to him. Thank God for the church. Thank God for Jesus Christ. And as a love that led Christ to the cross and died for a sinner like you and me. Why? Why did he die, preacher? That we might live through him. That we might live through him. Listen, that we might live. Listen, we live through him. We live with him. And we live for him. Somebody need to get it. Through him, with him, and for him. That's why he came. That is the message. Of our ministry. And church is about ministry. My, my, my. And ministry should be about the message. Listen, listen, the church is about ministry. You know why the church is about ministry? Because the Bible is designed to minister to us. 
Come on, somebody. Somebody don't know what. And listen, that's what the word is for. It ministers to us. And guess what? Everybody in the building need to be ministered to. Everybody need to be ministered to. Thank God for the ministry that God ministers to us. And that we become new creatures in Christ. There's a message in our ministry. Ministry should be about the message. And that's in this text. It clearly seen that a person who is in Christ is a new creature. That is what meant by the scripture. Script, the scripture turns as being, listen, in, in other words, you've been born again. And became a new man. And a new woman. And, and my little great granddaughter said, Papa, we going to church? I said, yes, we is. <laughs> Listen, that's what she said. We going to church? She said, well, we got to stop and get some, something to eat first. So, hey, listen, she's smart too. So I fed her, and she said, let's go. See, listen, listen. Hi. And she just turned three years old last week. And she, and she three years old, talking about let's go. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. And that's why we have to introduce our children and our grandchildren. Let me talk to somebody in here. We have to introduce them to Christ even if they don't want to hear it. Come on, somebody. That's our job. You want to borrow a couple of dollars? Yeah, you got to pay me back in Jesus' name. <laughs> we train them up. In the way that they should go. And they become new men and new women. Mm -hmm. And this text reminds us that all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And the new man, this is the message. The Christian ministry. Listen. The man can start to live over and over again a new life. God longs to make us a new creature, a new creature out of him. In John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, Say unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he can enter the kingdom of God. So we, we got to get a new nature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And become, listen, all things have become new. Romans 4 and 7 said, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins have been covered. And through salvation, God forgives the sinner of his sin. And through justification, God delivers the sinner from the bondage of guilt. And through reconciliation, God reestablished communication with the sinner. You know, he comes into our life and changes us. And through regeneration, God quickens the soul of a sinner like you and me. And brings us back to life. And through sanctification, preacher, God separates the sinner from his sin. And sinful practices. God has changed us. And through our conversion, God transformed the sinner's life, you and me, into a child of God. And through, watch this, through vindication, God, God declares the sinner to be righteous. Salvation takes its place when God converts this sinner heart and he or she becomes a converted, listen, saint. He touches the sinner's life and they become changed. The living Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person. Watch this, inside and out. We are not the same anymore. A new life has begun. A new life has begun, church family. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have come new. Second Thessalonians 5, and I'm almost done with you, and we're going to have a holy communion. Now in our Lord Jesus Christ himself, 
God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, through the comfort of our hearts, and has established you and I in every good work. I don't know if you know it, but I come to tell you, I work for the Lord. That's who the church, all of us who are in ministry, we work for the Lord. We work for the Lord, Reverend Sutler. And some folk don't know that, but that's who we work for. He's the boss. Tell us. Ephesians 4 and 24 tells us that put on a new man, which is after God. Creating and righteousness. This new man, this new woman is created in righteousness and true holiness after we put off the old man and the old woman that desires a sinful lifestyle. Then God expects you and me to put on the new man that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. That's the Lord and the holiness of God. I've learned that after we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we become a new person in Christ as being a saved person who's walking with the Lord. We become loving, have a loving attitude, patience in our actions, careful with our conduct, truthful in our conversations, firm in our faith, humble in our spirit, pure in our hearts, holy in our lives. Listen, holy in our lifestyles, right? And Christ, like our new commitment. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 5, that it's he who called you. He who called you, watch this now, is holy. So you also be holy in your own conduct. Listen, he who called us is holy. And listen, Miss Deaconess, he's called us to be holy in him. And I can't be holy in me. I got to be holy in the Lord. You better know it. If you think you're holy in you, you're in the wrong place. The only way to be holy is in Christ. We become new preachers and new teachers and new members and new saints in Jesus Christ alone. Thank you. Behold, all things has become new. When God saved us, this was started a new beginning that we become new in Christ Jesus. And I'm free. You are free in the Lord. And I want to say to the church, God works in us and through us. Come on, somebody. He works in us and he works through us. Thank God he works in us and he works through us. I said he works in us, Deacon Worrell, and he works through us because he's making us a new creature. And I'm going to say this. We done, Brother Curtis. For he who made him, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's why self-righteousness doesn't work. Because we got to be God-righteous. Thank God for his word. That we are new creatures in Christ. New creatures. And God, we pray now that you continue to work in our lives. Continue to order our steps, oh God. Continue to work in us, Lord. Work in us and work through us, Lord. As we do the work of kingdom building. We thank you for your word. Thank you that you've made us and you're making us, us new creatures. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. 
We are new creatures in Christ. New. Old has passed away. And behold, all has become new. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Amen and amen. And we're going to open the doors to the church. Because one of the most important things to do in God's house is to offer salvation. That Jesus Christ is available. And I believe I know everybody in the building and I believe everyone in here is saved this morning. But we want to be sure. And you might be looking for a church home if you don't belong to this great branch of Zion here. And we offer you an opportunity to join this household of faith. So the doors of the church are open. If there's one to my left or my right who wants to step out on faith and give us your hand and give God your heart, we invite you to come into the Lord's presence in his house. The doors are open. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. One more time with me. Let the church say amen let the church say amen God has spoken let the church say amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord there's plenty of work to do in the kingdom and there's room for God's servant. Thank you, Lord. your bulletin you'll find our church covenant and we're going to ask Deacon Payne to come and lead us in the reading of the church covenant I'm going to ask all those our members to please stand as we read the word of God together Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Church covenant. <clears throat> Having been led, as, as we, believe we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Yes. We engage therefore, therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of the church and the knowledge of the holiness. To give us our place in our affections, prayers, services above every organization of human origin to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerily and regularly as God has prospered us towards his expenses. For the support of the faithful evangelical ministry and the relief, relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we would strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain a family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to work circumspectly in the world, 
and to be kind and just to those in our ploy. And faithful in the service be promised to others, endeavoring in the purity of the heart of good will towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needing exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys and timber sympathy, and bear one another's burden and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure without delay through life and evil rapport and good rapport to seek to live to the glory of God, who have called us Shut out the of the darkness into his marvelous light. Uh, when we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of his covenant and the principle of God's word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Amen. 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 Let us look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this service. And Father, we've come to have Holy Communion this morning, this afternoon. Remember what you've done for us, O oh God. But we also, God, come to repent, to ask for forgiveness that you would clean us up, oh God, if we've done or said anything unpleasant in your sight. We ask for forgiveness right now. We ask, oh God, that you would bless everyone within the sound of my voice. Watch, bless those who are watching. And God, we ask that you bless the communion cups as we come to celebrate what you've done for us. You sent your son to die on the rugged cross, shed his precious blood, that we would have a right to the tree of life. And we thank you for that. So now we ask you to bless everyone in this house. We will partake of the Holy Communion. Oh God, and we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for your sacrifice and we give you praise today for this is the day that you made and we shall rejoice in it. It's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Come back to 
Yes. Let us stand, and as you're led by the ushers, let us come to receive our communion. And anyone who, if you can't make it, will come to you. Has everyone been served? No one's been omitted. Thank you. While celebrating the Passover feast in the upper room of Jerusalem, and Jesus and his disciples, he took bread and broke it and blessed it 
And he said to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Let us eat together. And he took the cup, the best of the best. And he said, this is my blood, shared for you, for the remission of sin. And I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine until I drink of the new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us commune together. And the Bible says they went out and sung a hymn to the Mount Olives. And we're going to sing a hymn. Have a blessed week. Amen. If we fellowship with the Lord. God bless you, sir. Lord, Jesus died on the cross. Said, I know it was the blood for me. It was, it was the blood. Open. Through me, it's open.